In this update, we'll report on the insights revealed by SpaceX's GM. We'll unpack her interview IFT2 and finally the new launch pads. SpaceX's general manager has made a shocking revelation about why the Starship Super Heavy exploded during its second test flight. In what was an otherwise successful launch, the booster encountered several problems shortly after separation from the craft. Let's talk about what SpaceX's general manager had to say about the incident and what we can expect on the next test flight. The exclusive interview. In 2023, a significant and emotional milestone unfolded for both SpaceX and its dedicated followers. After a prolonged period of anticipation, the moment arrived when SpaceX's colossal rocket, Starship, graced the skies not just once but twice. The company's remarkable achievements throughout the year have fueled the optimism of fans, who now harbor even greater expectations for a Starship breakthrough in 2024. As the new year looms just weeks away, Numerous lingering questions surround a recent incident involving the super heavy explosion during a flight. Despite the impending transition to 2024, clarity on the reasons behind this mishap remains elusive. To conclude the year on a positive note, the general manager of Starbase recently conducted a valuable sharing session. In this session, she shed light on two inaugural Starship orbital test flights, providing not only insights into these missions, but also unveiling intriguing and fresh details about SpaceX's Starship operational plans in South Texas for the foreseeable future. The exclusive sharing session was conducted by Kathy Luters at the Brownsville Event Center on Tuesday, December 12th, limited to invitees. Notably, this presentation in Texas might have transpired in Florida if the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, hadn't given the green light for two pivotal Starship test flights, one on April 20th and the other on November 18th. Elon Musk. SpaceX's CEO candidly asserted last year that Starbase might have been better situated as the company's advanced research and development hub in Florida. Cape Canaveral, on the other hand, would have served as Starship's primary operational launch site. This strategic decision emerged in response to the prolonged delays stemming from an environmental review by the FAA before Starship's initial flight test, IFT-1. Fortunately, Starbase remains the predominant launch site for Starship offering Texans the unique opportunity to engage with looters as she delved into the intricacies of the second orbital test flights. Let's talk about IFT-2. After gleaning valuable insights from the April 20th event, SpaceX's team eagerly embraced the second flight in November, marking a significant stride in the journey toward achieving Mars with Starship. Similar to IFT-1, IFT-2 concluded with both the booster and Starship self-destructing. However, in contrast to the inaugural launch, this time, the colossal rocket achieved a noteworthy milestone. The achievement lay in the eligibility for the hot stage separation. Following the successful separation, the Super Heavy reignited the second ring of the Raptor engines to facilitate maximum gimbal for the flip maneuver. Simultaneously, it initiated the boost backburn. However, challenges surfaced during the actual flip maneuver as B9 encountered three engine failures. Upon completing the flip, it seemed to pause for a few seconds before rapidly losing all remaining engines. As the top of the booster was facing downward, the observation of engine shutdown was hindered. However, even from this altered perspective, it became evident that a minimum of three engines experienced catastrophic explosions. The third and final engine failure proved to be more intense than the initial two. The explosion originated from the central section of the booster, indicating the collapse of tank shells, and an uncontrolled mixture of fuel and oxidizer. The venting of propellant was unmistakably visible not only from the engine section, but also from other parts of the booster. These indications collectively suggest multiple structural failures. Immediately following these events, two shiny objects, potentially two halves of the cylindrical shielding encompassing the power head of the center engines, were propelled from behind the booster. It appeared that the shielding had managed to prevent two-thirds of the engines from exploding, but unfortunately one of them succumbed to failure. Taking into account the anomalies in the Super Heavy's engine section, SpaceX's general manager mentioned that the Starship's anomaly investigation team now has additional data to scrutinize. The focus is on understanding why the automated flight termination systems were activated during the November 18th flight. Despite not being flawless, the recent performance of Starship underscored the effectiveness of the hot staging technique on a rocket of this magnitude. Following this significant development, looters also disclosed plans for testing the remaining components of the system in future flight tests, the new launch pads. In the coming year, the emphasis will not only be on testing, but also on advancing the capabilities of Starship. 
This includes a concerted effort towards the reuse of the booster and the execution of successful landing operations. The overarching goal is to bring the substantial booster back, refurbish it efficiently, and launch it again. However, these tests necessitate the availability of additional launch pads exclusively dedicated to testing the Mechazilla system, a confirmation echoed by Kathy Luters. It appears that construction activities for the launch pads may have commenced quite some time ago. The first indications emerged in November 2023 when media reports captured pieces of a new Starbase orbital launch tower arriving from Florida. This signaled SpaceX's active involvement in constructing a second launch tower at Starbase. Back in 2021, SpaceX had proposed an expansion plan for Starbase, which included the addition of a second tower. The expansion plan outlined modifications to the Starship vertical launch area, incorporating extra landing pads for testing and orbital launches. This comprehensive proposal encompassed the integration of launch towers dedicated to Starship and its super heavy rocket booster. Additionally, it considered associated stormwater management features and a vehicle parking lot for employees. The proposed expansion is expected to impact 10, 94 acres of mud flats, 5, 94 acres of estuarine wetlands, and 0, 28 acres of non-tidal wetlands. Despite various speculations, Luaters in her presentation simply stated that the construction of the second pad is imperative for SpaceX's goal of achieving a faster launch cadence. SpaceX is currently in the stages of acquiring launch licenses not only for the third, but also for the fourth Starship launch. The company is keen on having multiple launches in the upcoming year and, naturally, aims to substantially reduce the time intervals between these launches. This accelerated launch cadence is part of SpaceX's ongoing efforts to enhance its rockets and infrastructure continually. As the rockets and associated infrastructure undergo continuous improvement, the need for an adaptable operational launch and management OLM structure becomes increasingly apparent. To establish its Boca Chica complex as the premier manufacturing, launching, and operational center for Starship, SpaceX recognizes the crucial importance of garnering local support. In the discussion on December 12th, Looters also addressed concerns raised by residents near the launch site, emphasizing the need for community cooperation. Following the IFT-2, there were notable complaints about the impact of launch noise on the surrounding residential areas. Looters acknowledged the inevitability of noise associated with rocket launches, but clarified that, despite residing just two miles away from the launch site, her own house was unaffected, highlighting SpaceX's commitment to adhering to sound and vibration level limits set by the FAA for each launch. SpaceX consistently monitors these levels and factors in various conditions such as weather, wind, and cloud cover to inform residents about what to anticipate during future launches. Moreover, in a proactive measure, SpaceX has devised a strategy to conduct test operations away from the beach, ensuring minimal disruption to activities in the vicinity of the beach. What do you think? Has SpaceX taken enough measures to satisfy the local community, or will they continue to face problems at Starbase? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.